good morning everybody uh, and welcome to this india latin america chamber of commerce uh, session and uh, we will start our proceeding with mr rajkumar sharma ji's uh, session uh, presentation uh, he is the president of uh, ilacc so over to you thank you thank you uh, first of all at the outset we welcome our all the chief eminent guest from the latin america and specifically particularly excellency upender rawat sir you are welcome on our webinar program thank you very much for sparing your time and accepting our our request to be a chief speaker today though it is late tonight in panama i think that is around around 11:30 or so something something over there and uh, we also welcome mr hardeep singh bollar my friend and and the one of the one of the important pillar of the ministry of commerce government of panama sir you are welcome thank you very much for sparing again late in the night your time and joining our webinar we welcome mr sohan saxena our director brazil and he will introduce he will introduce himself to this thing chitwan you are you are also welcome and finally our great hero and and vice president latin america for ilsc based at costa rica panama prabhakar you are most welcome and you are you are one of the great personality that's why you are welcome again so with these with these words i will say excellency sir what was the reason to organize this type of program you know we are living in this uh, corona world the covid 19 has created a lot of problem across the world and we are unable to travel we are unable to organize the physical uh, conference and all these things so this was decided this is right time that we should proceed uh, we should we should we should proceed and organize this webinar i also welcome to this organizer of this program mr sandeepan that who has organized all this, all this thing indo latin american chamber of commerce is the only organization who is promoting bilateral not bilateral rather trilateral relations are between india and all part of latin american countries our all the all the all the officials meet from mexico costa rica brazil or any part of the world or uh, they are our pillar rather uh, rather because of them we are we are strengthening ourselves and we are going ahead you all do not know that this is rawat sir who endorsed our 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 uh, authenticity and everything in his ministry when he was the joint secretary uh, cpb division ministry of external affairs he did all the necessary required documents completion just one day rather half day when he was got transfer from cpb division to other division so sir aapka aapka ye ye jo hai ke we cannot forget your contribution what you have given to us contributed to us and uh, main objective sir is here today that we would like to focus to promote india like in america we want to give the opportunity to the trade here in india that, that how they can promote their business in latin america what is the possibility and what is the opportunity available over there how they can promote it followed by the various documentation formalities followed by the various uh, government related government related policies etc etc and then we will give this opportunity to speak everybody sir panama is basically strategically located place you know so we want the we want to promote the latin america through panama and through the through through uh, through our organization 
so all these things are here so this is the basic agenda for what we are here our lot of at, at least i believe how much at least 50 plus attendees as of now more and more will join so they all want to know excellency what is the what is the opportunity available in panama and you are in the conference of nicaragua and costa rica chitwan you will have to advise that how you can look into the, about the mexico then suvanji and then finally finally uh, mr mr prabhakar and hardeep singh so with this note i hereby request our chief speaker excellency sri us rawat sir please give your valuable guidance suggestion and how to promote it thank you thank you very much uh, sharma ji and uh, i would also like to um, to welcome uh, my fellow uh, panelists uh, uh, mr hardeep singh bhuller uh, ms chitwan and uh, mr sogam saxena uh, to this uh, webinar uh, i am very happy to join the webinar uh, this is uh, we i also to i want to begin with by acknowledging and by thanking uh, I, uh, L, this uh, ilacc and uh, its president uh, sri rk sharma we heard him very eloquently just now ILSCC has uh, been very proactive in uh, promoting uh, uh, business relation, particularly trade uh, with Latin America, and uh, and in fact, it has been very active in uh, Central American region. And uh, we have, in fact, uh, I also would like to congratulate uh, uh, ILSCC uh, and. Uh, also uh, mr uh, prabhakar sharan that uh, uh, ilsc is president in central america that just uh, a few days ago uh, uh, mou between ilsc and uh, uh, the uh, um, and uh, panamanian ministry of commerce has been signed for business promotion and uh, with uh, mr prabhakar sharan as uh, goodwill ambassador for india so congratulations and it is all because of hard work of ilscc and uh, mr buller uh, so we are now expecting that in the uh, coming uh, year uh, expo comer uh, in expo comer we will have a uh, uh, good participation of indian companies and i hope to see some of the uh, companies who are represented here today in expo comer unfortunately this year this expo comer was uh, cancelled uh, because of uh, uh, the pandemic so uh, we are hoping that things will pick up later this year and we will have uh, a participation of indian companies uh, expo comer is one of the most important events in this area with the uh, uh, such products like textile cloth accessories foods beverages and agriculture products uh, technology and electronics etc so this will be quite useful and uh, i also want to uh, thank uh, mr sharma that uh, he has also come up with new idea of uh, Indola Indo Latin America Trade Fair, uh, which is ILSCC's uh, own uh, brainchild, and I hope that it will uh, also help in uh, promotion of trade and investment uh, uh, of Indian companies in this region. And uh, as Mr. Sharma just uh, referred in his uh, opening remarks, that uh, the even the Central American region is a very slender strip of land which joins North America with South America. But this uh, region is very strategically located and it is very important region. The uh, seven countries in this uh, area, though they make only uh, trade with uh, India of only uh, just over uh, $1 billion, about $1.1 
five billion dollars with India, but uh, this is per, with Panama Canal, uh, uh, which has made shipping very easier between uh, uh, between the Americas and other parts of the world. Panama is the uh, logistic center and uh, service <coughs> hub of the entire American region. So it uh, pro provides a very good base for uh, doing uh, business. And uh, there are, uh, and that that is the reason that uh, uh, many of the companies are already represented uh, in this region. So, uh, in coming uh, back to the uh, um, to the uh, to Panama about the opportunities that we have here, uh, I would like to uh, just add that uh, in Expo Comer and uh, in some other uh, uh, prominent events in uh, in uh, Panama. Indian companies have been uh, participating in various uh, trade fairs in the past also with the support of uh, uh, our uh, um, uh, our export promotion councils and uh, government uh, various uh, trade bodies of government of India and uh, uh, we hope that uh, with the ILSCC uh, supporting these events now in a more prominent uh, way we will have better participation in the future. Um, and uh, I also would like to uh, mention that uh, uh, we also have uh, with us uh, Mr. Prakasran who lives in Costa Rica. Both Costa Rica and Panama, they provide a good opportunity for uh, trade and investment. They are, these are small countries with population between both the countries with population between four and five million uh, people. But uh, uh, with both the countries are high uh, income countries. And in fact, Costa Rica is now very recently got uh, approval from uh, OECD Organization for, for Economic Cooperation and Development. The a uh, group of developed countries to join as a, a fourth mm -hmm. member from Latin America. And Panama is also similarly placed in terms of economic development. So these two mm -hmm. countries uh, in this region as most prominent and most developed countries in uh, Central America provide a good opportunity for business. Many Indian companies in IT sector, uh, for example, Wipro, Infosys, um, cognizant etc. They have recently been uh, having operations in uh, Costa Rica and uh, and uh, um, like uh, Infosys is also planning to uh, uh, expand its business there. And uh, so uh, this area provides uh, not only opportunity for uh, uh, trade but also in terms of investment as not only just in uh, goods but also in uh, service sector because uh, we have uh, we are in the region where uh, which is uh, uh, which is logistics and uh, service hub local market and one can also take care of the uh, market in other uh, countries in this region uh, the, which is one of the attractive points for uh, IT sector not only for the market here but also to take care of US market and uh, uh, others uh, located in around the same uh, time zone. So uh, and uh, another example is like uh, many Indian companies uh, they uh, ex um, uh, export their products to Latin America through uh, USA, which not only increases the uh, uh, the cost of ex uh, export, but also increases the time taken to reach uh, for their products to reach the final market. Uh, if it is done directly through uh, to these countries and through using the uh, logistic hub, for example, in Panama, then it increases the efficiency. So, uh, so uh, 
uh, I would um, uh, like to, uh, um, um, to conclude by saying that uh, is we have opportunity uh, in trade and investment, not only in goods and but services also. And uh, um, uh, now the uh, uh, this pandemic has also uh, one of the things which has also highlighted is the more need for a more uh, climate. Uh, friendly policies, which, for example, in case of government of Costa Rica, it was also following uh, this uh, decarbonization plan uh, even before. So uh, in terms of renewable energy, solar energy, electric vehicles, these are the uh, sectors in the, uh, uh, in the economy which uh, after this initial setback of the pandemic, uh, in the long run, they will get, become uh, more and more important you know, for the uh, for the businesses who want to come to this region or who would like to expand here. I would like to uh, uh, say a few words of uh, uh, advice that. Uh, uh, one is that uh, in the Latin American region, it is very important to develop relationship with your local partner, purchaser, and all. Um, so, and in which, uh, in that sense, it, the region is similar to the uh, as in India. The personal relationship is important, and here knowing the language uh, helps. And uh, if you even if one doesn't know uh, the language fully, if there is some uh, basic uh, effort to communicate uh, important words and um, greetings, etc., uh, in local language, Spanish, it helps. Uh, and uh, also, in terms of uh, uh, service or product, localization of pro product and service uh, suiting to the market in the region is uh, also. Uh, important and uh, and the another thing is the uh, uh, which has become more important after the pandemic is uh, uh, creating alternative and innovative ways of uh, doing the business promotion to using online and uh, uh, basically you more use of uh, information technology in this world uh, which has become important so um, so even though the uh, India's trade with these countries, uh, say uh, Costa Rica and Parama, has been about say um, about two hundred say between two hundred to three hundred uh, billion dollar, roughly about uh, in during the last year, and uh, with Nicaragua it is uh, less than hundred million dollar. But uh, knowing the size of these countries and also knowing the uh, the opportunity in terms of logistics at hub, as we have been discussing, and Mr. Sharma also mentioned, uh, we see the uh, lot of opportunity for uh, enhancing uh, the business relations. And this, with this uh, word, I hand uh, back to uh, Mr. Sharma. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, very lively and very informative presentation. My point is, you could you like to take some questions uh, from the audience right now or a little later, maybe after 10, 15 minutes after Mr. Buller. As per your convenient, I don't know. Yeah, I can take uh, questions after Mr. Buller's presentation. Yeah. Right, right, right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Hello. Rachna. Uh, now we welcome yes. Mr. Hardeep Singh Buller to, to, to take his uh, session and share his views. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, just, just a few words because uh, uh, dear Ambassador uh, Upender Singh Rawat has said everything about about Panama, and thank you for that, uh, Mr. Ambassador. Um, my name is Ardeep Singh Pular. I am the uh, Marketing Investment Director for the Government of Panama, and I am also the, the Embassy Son. Uh, 
first right. of all, I, I want to thank uh, my dear friend, Mr. Rajkumar Sharma, uh, who, because of his extraordinary support to me in my last trip to India. Thank you very much. Uh, also, thank, thank you, Mr. Prabhakar Sharan, who was there with me. And we spread the news about the new relations between uh, uh, Panama and India. And also Mr. Kundan Kanan, who is not here right now, but he was a great support uh, for me in India. Well, mm -hmm. I, as I told you, uh, working for, for the government of, of Panama is, is something very interesting. Uh, I have been uh, working for, for the government since the last seven years. Um, our main job has been traveling abroad and make business conference to, to promote Panama economic sectors and try to attract investments to, to Panama and, and vice versa. In, in, in the case specific of, uh, of India, of course, because of my, my, my origin, I have been working very hard since three years ago to do something very big between the two countries. That's the reason I, I started the project Panama Meets India, and we traveled uh, to, to India last year, uh, October uh, of two, 2019, and we were there two weeks uh, promoting Panama and looking the way to, to, to encourage uh, all the, the possible um, companies that can come to Panama. And for example, uh, we can see that Panama is a very small country. It's, we are around 5 million people, but as a hub of hubs, we serve 1.3 billion persons around the world. I mean, uh, counting all the, the Americas. Uh, we have a very strong uh, Cologne free zone. That is the second large free zone <laughs> in the Latin America. Um, we have uh, also a free trade zone. It's very big. We have 17 uh, free trade zones. We have uh, the city of knowledge where we can find over there universities and research companies from all over the world. And we can find there also uh, education institutions. Uh, we have also Panama Pacifico, that is uh, a, free, a very big free trade zone. Uh, and most important is that we have uh, a very strong Indian community in Panama, uh, 15,000 uh persons that uh are the, the main community of, of of indians in panama and they are involved in retail uh, law construction logistic uh consultants whatever uh, the indian community in panama is is very very interesting and there are a lot of investors that uh, would like to make uh any any kind of uh, of contacts between uh, the Indian companies and other companies around the world. So this is the time. This is the time for 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 Panama to to develop uh, or increase uh, the bilateral relations between the two countries, and with the assistance of of Ambassador uh, Rawat and the team of, of the government of Panama, uh, we believe that we are going to increase those uh, relations between the two countries. I think that that uh, these are the, the specific points that uh, uh, we can consider to, to, to start uh, a new relation between India and Panama. That's one of my my main uh, jobs this year. Uh, because of the you know of the coronavirus, uh, everything is uh, you know stopped here in Panama as all in the countries. But 
uh, we expect that uh, next year with, with Expo Comer that will be developed in March and other events that we are going to, to, to develop uh, between uh, June and September of the next year, we will see the, the things uh, more clear than we have now. So, so uh, I want to thank you, you all, and I want to say that uh, uh, we are working very hard uh, with the Embassy of India to Panama and with Mr. Prabhakar Sharan, and also with the Embassy of Panama to India uh, to see uh, the way to increase uh, better uh, commercial relations between the two countries. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, moderator, I it was decided that after Mr. Hardeep Simbullar, some questions will be taken uh, by by uh, uh, ambassador and this thing. So can you ask some questions from audience if they want to take either from uh, uh, Excellency or Mr. Bullard? Sure, sir. So I have a question. Uh, this is a question from uh, Mr. Nishant Gaur, and he's asking uh, whether this language is a challenge or a barrier for Indian uh, Indian entrepreneurs to reach out and do business in Latin America. So if uh, Ambassador U.S. Rawat can take this session, uh, take this question. Uh, okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, I actually, I did mention in my intervention about the um, the uh, utility of knowing the Spanish uh, language. Uh, as you are aware, that uh, entire Latin America, except Brazil, 40 plus country, speak language is Spanish. So it is useful. While it is not uh, essential, but it is useful that uh, if those who are willing to do business in this region. Uh, if they know uh, Spanish, it uh, definitely is uh, is helpful, and uh, and it is also uh, relate, uh, it is more beneficial that uh, whatever effort uh, uh, one makes in this direction, the uh, uh, the same language works in uh, these forty plus countries, and. Uh, uh, I think uh, Mr. Muller can also add on this because he is uh, not only representing the uh, uh, the uh, Ministry of Commerce of the Government of uh, Panama here, but he is also of Indian origin, so he understands both the sites uh, very well, both India and Panama. Well, well I, I can say that, well, Spanish is the main language of, of, of Panama, of, of course, and English is used for commercial purposes. So in my experience, when I have uh, been working with uh, Indian investors that uh, come from abroad, I mean, not only from India, uh, for example, from Canada or from or from uh, Trinidad and Tobago, or from Europe, whatever, uh, they use English to uh, talk and and try to understand the, the Panamanian culture. And well, in, in English is, is is the other language that is used in Panama. So in case uh, uh, any I Indian investor comes to Panama, uh, there is no uh, problem with with English and uh, believe it or not, uh, Indians learn Spanish very, very fast. Very, very fast. That's something very, that's something very interesting. But uh, if any investor comes to Panama, uh, they will not have any problems if, if they speak English. Uh, there's always uh, uh, the opportunity to talk uh, in, in English, so it, it, it's, it's something that you will not find like, uh, oh, what I'm going to do? I only speak, uh, for example, Punjabi or Hindi or Marathi. No, but if you speak English, uh, you will uh, be considered in Panama for for any purpose. 
Yeah, Thank that's you. true. And also in Costa Rica, you will have no problem. Yeah. Starting all. Yeah, but it's always useful to learn the local language to to go beyond the initial phases of your business. Yeah. <laughs> So next, I have multi, uh, questions from multiple people. So one is Mr. Prabhuda, and he is asking, does uh, Latin America provide any specific benefits uh, for Indian investors to come and invest there? So if you have any specific benefit, uh, subsidies, grants for Indian invest, uh, investors to explore in Latin America, can you please uh, share that? Uh, that Mr. Bull, Mr. Let Mr. Buller, you please reply this question. You are a director of investment there, so you can reply very well. Well, uh, uh, there are many possibilities for, for any Indian company that uh, wants to, for example, to to establish here in Panama and, for example, re-export uh, uh, products to, to the Latin American region, for example, because uh, we have uh, many incentive laws that I can uh, gladly share uh, with uh, Mr. Sharma, so 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 you can be uh, available to see uh, the opportunities that uh, Indian exporters can have in Panama. Uh, talking about incentive laws and mm -hmm. something very important, uh, the immigration topics. In in any law, in any incentive law. For uh, for international companies, uh, there's the component of, of immigration. So if an, an Indian investor comes to Panama and establish here, uh, there is an immigration law that that uh, avails that uh, the investor and his family can come to Panama and also. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, the employees that he needs for uh, to uh, start the operation in Panama. So I can share that information with uh, with Mr. Sharma. So you can have uh, the laws, the incentive laws, and the immigration law of Panama. Uh, thank you, Mr. Buller. Uh, the next question is uh, to uh, Ambassador uh, Mr. U.S. Rawat. Uh, is there any single uh, just wait a second? Is is there any single window support for exporters as a service by embassy for the Indian businessmen? Well, yes, yeah, of course, yeah. There is a single window support uh, because uh, there, there is just one embassy for the three countries: uh, Panama, Costa Rica, and Nicaragua. So, a single window, single organization. So, uh, whatever uh, um, trade or investment related uh, uh, proposal or query a company has, they can send us. Uh, uh, their um, uh, proposal and uh, with the local governments and local authorities uh, we will uh, we uh, uh, we try our best to uh, uh, to find the information make connections and uh, whatever is required yes uh, so i have uh, thank you uh, ambassador so we have many questions. One is uh, from uh, our uh, uh, delegates or attendees asking about different verticals. So if you can uh, elaborate and let us know uh, for, for the for to the attendees, what are the three uh, top industry verticals which are uh, can be the uh, key focus for the Indian uh, uh, exporters uh, at uh, Latin American countries? So three uh, verticals because people are asking about uh, recycling opportunities. People are asking about stones and granite. Some of them are asking some other products. So if you can just let us understand the three top industry verticals, which should be a focus for Indian uh, in Latin America. Uh, Mr. Buller, if you can take this uh, question, sir. Well, there, there, there are a lot of, of opportunity for, for, for Indian companies. For example, Panama is looking for, for the film industry. Uh, we have a, a, an, incent an incentive, uh, film uh, law that allows uh, Indian companies, I mean, from, from, from Bollywood, for, for example, uh, to come to Panama and, and shoot uh, films 
Uh, here in Panama, we have incentives for that. And also uh, uh, another, another, another sector very interesting will be uh, recycling energy projects, for example. Uh, I mentioned recycling. Uh, high tech <laughs> companies uh, are very, very important for, 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 for us in Panama. Uh, also, uh, logistic and construction uh, are main sectors that uh, Panama uh, is trying to, to see uh, if we can add more Indian companies in those kind of sectors that uh, India has a, a lot of experience and that's the reason I told you, for example, that uh, recycling projects, energy projects, um, water projects, uh, logistics, uh, the, the, the film industry uh, are some examples of uh, investments that Panama is looking for. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Mr. Rawat, can you just add something on that? What is your views about the top three verticals? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, um, I would also add like um, uh, in the list, Mr. Huller has given the uh, India's uh, traditional strength. Uh, if you talk about uh, the pharmaceutical industry, especially after the uh, uh, this uh, pandemic, the uh, um, in immediate future and for years to come, the importance of pharmaceutical industry, which is very uh, huge industry in India, uh, only increases. Then uh, uh, IT sector and uh, services is uh, another area in which India is very strong. And uh, many Indian companies are also in uh, Costa Rica and uh, Panama also provides uh, a lot of opportunity. Thank you, uh, Ambassador Rawat. Uh, uh, I think uh, we can uh, uh, stop and take uh, some uh, some more sessions uh, from our other team. Yeah, we yeah. should. Uh, this, this is the last question. And if somebody have more and more question, take their question forward to us. We will take consultancy uh, with the concerned department through Mr. Prabhakar, and we will reply to them. Fine, sir. So we have a lot of questions. So all the questions will be uh, shared uh, uh, and will be answered directly by uh, the uh, ILAC Association's team. Uh, once the session is over, they will uh, respond back to you. So, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Sharmaji, can we now move ahead and have the next ask the next speaker? Yeah, Mr. Uh, to, to... Mr. Prabhakar, sir, Mr. Prabhakar, sir, I will speak. But let me tell you something, Mr. Prabhakar. And, and uh, if you know how he profiles, then you please brief. Otherwise, I will brief. Sir, you please brief, sir. Uh, my okay. request is. Okay. Mr. Prabhakar Sharan is our Indian arm, Indian brother, Indian person based in Costa Rica, Panama, since last, I believe, over 20 years. He is the second Indian who reached in Costa Rica when there was nothing, nobody was even knowing in India based Costa Rica. But anyway, uh, by dint of his hard work, he proved himself as a leading businessman. He is not only the businessman, he runs his own three, four university over there. He is in the education field. And his recognition is that he is one of the most successful, great hero, actor in Costa Rica. He has made two, three movies and all this thing. The rest of the things, Mr. Prabhakar, I hereby invite you for your presentation related to the business, related to film industry, related to education, and overall. Please proceed. Thank you, sir. A very good evening to everyone. A very good evening to respected Upender Singh Rawat and our honorable ambassador, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm really very sorry. So late you are supporting our our talk and it's so late for you i mean really very sorry for you and thank you for giving your time sir uh, mr hardeep singh buller thank you very much for you know coming uh, and giving your experience to all our audience in india 
uh, same Mr. Sohan Saxena, he's more late in uh, Brazil. I think it's like 3 a.m. And Chitwanji in Mexico, I think he's also very late. But uh, I really appreciate for all the team members uh, who are here. And, uh, you know, they are giving such a support to, uh, to, to my chamber and to Mr. R.K. Sharma and to all our lovely uh, audience uh, who want to know about Latin America. So to make a very short presentation, Sir has uh, given a, a very a, a very brief and very knowledgeable presentation um, about Latin America, about Panama, about Costa Rica. Uh, same Mr. Harveep Singh Bhullerji has given a lot of knowledge and, and experience being an Indian. So what I will do is I'm not going to give uh, today uh, knowledge about Latin America because more than sir, what we will know more. But I will give my own experience uh, being in uh, Latin America, being in Costa Rica, being being in Panama from last 22 years, how it changed my life. I came here, I, I come from a very humble family from Bihar. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, just like a middle class family, we work hard to come outside and I came and I got the opportunity, like Mr. R.K. Sharma sir told 22 years back to come and do my studies in Costa Rica. I finished my my plus two education in, in India and then um, I did my graduation and my further studies in Costa Rica and Panama. Coming here uh, as an Indian, I can tell you, uh, like we were talking about the language, that was my first uh, the most difficult barrier which I crossed because when I came here, I was a completely vegetarian person. Uh, I never, you know, uh, knew Spanish, a single word of it. Uh, I never, uh, you know, uh, being from India, you come to a, a foreign country, so you don't have friends, you don't have nobody. So I was totally on my own. I remember <laughs> till date today, I used to cook my food from my mother's, uh, my mother on the phone and. I used to cook food because I was a vegetarian and the, uh, mostly you don't, on that time you don't used to get vegetarian food, um, uh, I mean, everywhere like today. So uh, the first barrier what I crossed was language. Uh, yes, Spanish is very much similar to English and learning English is, could be more harder, but learning Spanish is more easier. Uh, this is my own personal experience. I was told by my cousin uh, who was the first student here um, uh, uh, who came uh, three years uh, uh, more before than me. And he told me that in six months, you learn Spanish by yourself. I say, it's not possible because I'm not understanding TV. I'm not understanding any newspaper. If I go to talk to somebody, nobody understands me. I really want to go back. He said, he said me, just give me six months. You just do your studies and just, you know, don't try to talk to anybody uh, like in Hindi or or try to, conversate in Spanish. And believe me, uh, all the listeners, I followed that. And in six months, uh, it's not about that I'm very like, like an extra intelligent guy. I'm a normal student. And in six months, I was very well acquainted from Spanish language. Uh, later on, uh, you know, being an Indian, I told you lots of uh, cultural difference, which I sorted out. Uh, living here is same like living in India or uh, I mean, in some uh, uh, some small, like you go in Goa and you find, you will find Costa Rica, or you come to Costa Rica and you will find Goa, or, you know, you will find Chennai, or you will find, uh, I mean, you go to San Jose, you will find uh, like Delhi. So, so uh, these countries are very small, it's very true, but it's very well organized uh, in terms of uh, government regulations, law binding, every small or, or big companies, they follow rules, regulations, and law. Everybody has a lawyer. Everybody has a everybody has a um, a setup of uh, uh, people uh, who really guide them how to get established. It doesn't matter a company so big or small. It's about the tradition. Here, people are very much tradition that you know it doesn't matter how small company he is, but you'll ask, uh, hey, I want to uh, sell you something. He will say, okay, let me talk to my lawyer. So this is what the custom and the culture is coming uh, from long back in, I can say in Central America where I'm living right now. And of course, same must be followed in Latin America. Third thing I will tell you, uh, uh, the language importance, I think it's very much, uh, I personally, again, with my experience, uh, my uh, half of my family, they live in US. My brother, he's an American citizen. Uh, uh, they manage more than 34 restaurants in Seattle. So whenever I visit him, 
uh, I am the person, uh, not because of my brother, but I am the person, his boss, his owner, likes me to sit on the business because I know Spanish. So he says that, Sharon, 60% of the uh, of the main uh, working people in US are, are, are Espanol. So if you come here, it really helps me a lot to manage them and to become more friendly and more uh, better environment. So Spanish, as you know, you know, it's, it's uh, more than 600 million people. Uh, uh, they speak Spanish. Uh, it's a, a third language most followed and most studied worldwide. I mean, uh, anywhere mm -hmm. you go in, in India, you see we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, Latin culture. We have. Uh, salsa, uh, every school, every every bar, every disco you go, you will listen to Spanish music. So it makes you very friendly that, you know, we, uh, you are going to learn something which is going to open a huge horizon from starting after Brazil and till uh, Mexico. All these countries, you are, you, you know, it was not in your agenda. Again, with my experience, a uh, very small uh, thing I'll tell you, I have done lots of business and I have got a huge failures in my life. I have started a uh, business from uh, uh, from a small um, uh, package uh, of DHL and I have gone to uh, uh, 30, 40 containers a month, which I was supplying or I was, I was exporting or I was importing in that. Marble and granite is a very uh, wanted product in, in Central America, but due to cost factor, uh, because not the, the direct uh, buyers uh, they come to Latin America, they, it all comes to US, so it gets more expensive. So yes, uh, uh, construction is one of the best business. I was into construction also. Um, uh, uh, every, uh, you know, here, uh, Latin people have a culture, uh, which is my observation. Uh, firstly, before they buy a car, they will buy a house. It's a, it's, a, it's a culture from Latin America that they want to get established. Everyone after 14, 15 years, they have experience they, that they are forced by their parents that they have to go and work and they have to go and get settled. They have to pay at least the, the electric bill. Uh, they have to pay at least uh, the water bill. It doesn't matter uh, if he or she is a 15 year or 14 year or 16 year. It's not that they, they go and do, but they do some kind of help. So they come out more earlier than we are customized in India that, you know, uh, after 17, 18, we go to, no, but here, People go more uh, responsible in their early ages, and that gives that culture of getting a house. Then the need of the middle class to grow is very high here in Latin America. So all this helps you, uh, the economy to boost. Right now, uh, like I told you again from, from my experience, um, my families uh, who are having a big business in US, yes, they are doing very well, but a small business like my cousins and all, everybody is, uh, you know, like, salary and pay. I mean, everything they make, they pay out. But Latin America right now is on a very growing phase. Uh, people from US, Canada, uh, Australia, Europe, everyone is coming, Panama, Costa Rica, uh, not just because of investment opportunity, because of climate. We have the best climate. Uh, you can say, I don't say about the world, but we have the best climate, at least in this region. Uh, we are always, uh, we, we have never ice. Uh, like Canada or US, which goes minor, minus four, minus eight degree, minus 30, 38 degree, minus 40 degree also in Canada this time, uh, there was huge ice. We are, you know, I mean, we never have seen ice here and neither we are very hot. You go to San Jose, you will feel a very breezy and, and a very nice climate all the year. You go to uh, Panama, uh, you will feel always uh, uh, um, a very friendly climate like you find in Goa, you find in Chennai, you find in Mumbai. That is the climate you will find. So all this uh, gives, uh, you know, gave me uh, to uh, new, new motives to do different businesses. I started, uh, like I told you, from, from importing clothes. Uh, then, you know, uh, later on, I moved on to, to uh, marble business. I started bringing marble and granite for Marriott Hotel in, in Costa Rica. Uh, then later on, uh, again, I moved on. Um, I always wanted to become an actor. So uh, later on, I completely dedicated my, my life on Bollywood movie distribution. I am the first Indian citizen who, uh, by the respect of uh, ambassadors, or I will tell, who uh, bring Bollywood movies. I was not making uh, so much of money on it, but I was doing because of my passion uh, of my country. 
because of my passion of becoming, uh, 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 to showing my culture to all Latin American people. I remember in, in year 2006, in year 2005, I used to uh, bring uh, films like Banaras, A Mystic Love Story, or uh, Garam Masala, to show that, you know, we have in India everything. We have a, we have a, a Bollywood style uh, uh, culture. Uh, we have a traditional culture, uh, culture like you, you see in our traditional movies. So this all helps me a lot to create a, a very good name for India, uh, like my cousin did. And then later on, I, I uh, continued to that. And then finally, uh, uh, after all my uh, nine, 10 years of uh, hard work, uh, after one, two small movies, I did one of the biggest movie of Latin America with a very big investment, which is uh, Enredados La Confusión. Uh, it means entangle the confusion. It became a huge hit in all Central America. And uh, from there, yes, uh, I can't say my destiny changed, but yes, from there, I got a lot of help, a lot of love from all our Indian ambassadors in the whole region. Uh, Ambassador Sir was not there on that time, but uh, Madam was there and then ambassador in Guatemala, ambassador in Mexico, who was from my state, from Bihar, uh, then ambassador uh, in, um, in in Guatemala. Everyone called me as a family member, as a brother, as a father, as a parent, and everyone supported. So this is what we get in Latin America because, uh, you know, everyone get more familiar because the culture is like that and everyone gets an opportunity to develop uh, their their uh, their business, uh, get a platform with a friendly people. Uh, Latin people are same like us. Uh, if you see also, they look like us. Uh, somebody is, uh, you know, somebody will look like uh, people in Bombay. Somebody will look like people in Delhi. So you will you will not feel that kind of distance with the people. You will feel that you know, I mean, they are very similar to us. Uh, uh, their eating habits, same like us. We just eat a little more spicy, but they also eat what we eat in India. Same kind of uh, food we you will get here. So in any terms, I will say you, um, of course, I miss India because that's my country and my, my blood. But uh, in terms, uh, I have a second life and my second family, which is in Costa Rica, Panama. And without these countries, really, I would not have got any recognition what I, uh, what I am today. Uh, thanks to Costa Rica, Panama, and the people from Costa Rica, Panama, and everywhere. So yes, uh, uh, like I, uh, I will conclude my 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 time, telling you guys, uh, everyone who's listening out. I came here as a student, and uh, I was not even having money to come here. To be true, I don't know my father. I think sold my my grandfather's uh, gun, and he got some money uh, to buy my ticket. And uh, thanks God that, you know, after seven, eight years, I bought the same gun and I gave him back. And I said that, you know, this is what you sold to somebody for, for my ticket. So wow. yes, these countries gave me the opportunity uh, to develop my skill. These countries gave me the opportunity to bring um, uh, bring a clay, Multani uh, Mitti in Hindi we say, a clay from Haryana. And that was my first business. I was I used to bring the clay from Haryana, uh, like free of cost, you can say, from my friends. And I used to sell here in hundred to uh, two hundred dollar a kg. So all these opportunities, I will conclude that you can also have. Uh, you only need to come and explore. Language is not a barrier. People is not a barrier. Visas and other sections, yes, like ambassadors are told, they are very. Uh, all embassies in Latin America, and especially ambassadors are who's managing three countries. They are very active for all Indian citizens, not just in, in, in this region, but from India also, because before also, many of my friends, they get help when Sir was not there. So I am a, a testimony that uh, our embassies are very um, prominent uh, for any help you need, uh, you know, just on a call. And same Indian community is very small. So everybody love each other. There is nothing, uh, like uh, competition. I mean, you know, if I'm in a, in a movie business, so uh, if somebody else, uh, they support me. That hey, it's you know, Indian bhai, saran hai, hero hai. Let's go and watch his movie. Let's support him. So you know, this this uh, the competition is not here. You can come with your product. You can come with your idea. And believe me, this is the right place. Latin America and especially Panama, being a being a hub a hub of all uh, Central America, you can say. 
because of Panama Canal, because of all the facilities. I don't want to go on that, but it's because of uh, Panama being the, you can say the capital of Central America, I analyze like this, uh, with having such a great relation with America, Europe and Canada, you can come with anything with having so facilities with free trade zone, government incentive programs, uh, visa programs, residencies programs, and it's so easy, it's just one window, one window shop. So thank you very much uh, listeners and uh, to all my uh, respected sir and uh, all my fellow friends and especially Hardi Paji, uh, who started India Meets Panama and gave me the biggest opportunity, uh, which sir announced today, that I am being uh, assigned as a first Indian citizen with uh, full benefit as a, uh, as a global ambassador for Ministry of Commerce and Industry. And this is all because of guidance of our embassy, uh, guidance of Mr. R.K. Sharma, and completely hard work of Mr. Hardeep Singh Buller, and to our respected um, minister, Mr. Ramon Martinez uh, from Panama. They gave first time an opportunity to an Indian guy who has nothing to do with Panama. I'm not even a Panama citizen. And they just uh, bring me on the, on the table. And they, uh, you know, because of my hard work, they gave me this opportunity to make more name for both the countries. So I really uh, I'm thankful uh, to Latin America. I'm really thankful to Panama from my heart. I'm really thankful to Costa Rica where I live, where my family lives and to all of you. Thank you very much. Sir. Oh, I think our honorable ambassador, sir, he wants to go. So, sir, you would like to stay, I would like to go. This is your decision. If you want to stay, we will love you to stay, but I cannot say. I had told you that after the presentation, you may go. Uh, now you please advise. Sir, I'm sorry, sir, I'm sorry if I was long. I was really sorry. I got emotion. I'm really sorry. Uh, no, yeah, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, no, I would, uh, yeah, um, um, Mr. Sir, uh, Sarma and all the dear colleagues, uh, I would like to say, uh, yeah, uh, uh, goodbye to you. And uh, I will catch up uh, next time with everyone again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sir, thank you very much. Next time we will see you, you people's yes, convenient sir. and comfortability time. This time I am sorry that you all are late. But Prabhakar, you will not leave it. You will be here. So your night, your, your night is with us today. So you will not leave it. Same, I will ask Chitwan and Sobhani. But yes, sir, thank you very much for joining us. Next thank webinar you. should be around 10th of June. And and uh, we will ask, we will discuss you. And then we will organize as per your time, Indian time, maybe around uh, 6, 7 or maybe 8 o'clock. I will see it. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Prabhakar ji, I think that you should take question after Mr. Soban Satyan and Chitwan speak, then you will take a question. Uh, Soban ji, may I request you, uh, may I request you to put forth your uh, viewpoint in respect to India, Brazil, and then in turn to the Latin America business, business uh, scenario, business situation, probabilities of business opportunity, various type of product and all these things. I don't see. Just a minute, sir. Uh, Hardeep ji, I cannot, I cannot ask you to stay here. If you wish, you are most welcome. If you cannot wish, then it is your wish. Well, uh, I want to say something uh, from my heart. Um, uh, Please. Mr. Prabhakar Sharan mentioned it. Uh, uh, now he has a new role for the Panama India bilateral relations. Uh, this, this has been a, a very important project uh, done for me, from, from me, to promote uh, Sharanji as the first. Indian in the region to be a goodwill ambassador. That's something uh, very, very important, something that uh, has to be mentioned everywhere. Not because of the title, it's because the way uh, we are thinking that the world is going to change. And that was 
one of the reasons that I uh, promote uh, Mr. Prabhakar Sharan as a goodwill ambassador because this is a big opportunity. I mentioned that to uh, Mr. Sharma in India last time. Uh, this is going to be something very important for, for all the Latin American region. <laughs> uh, from a small country like Panama, uh, having the opportunity to have uh, Mr. Prabhakar Sharan as the first goodwill ambassador for Panama-Indian bilateral relation, it will represent something very interesting for all the Latin American countries. Uh, the, the thing is that uh, we, can, we can start to see the world in, the, in a different way, try to understand that uh, Indians and, and Panamanians, for example, can, can do better, better jobs, better, better, better uh, things uh, for, the, for the two countries. But also, as, as all the other uh, Latin American countries are doing with India, it, it, it is something to be uh, to have in, in consideration. So, so uh, I, I will say, in, in my humble opinion, that uh, uh, we are we in Panama we are learning from the Big Brother India, and also we are learning from all the Latin American countries that has a project with us. Uh, we pretend that uh, with this new assignment for Mr. Prabhakar Sharan, we will do a lot of things in Panama, talking about Panama specifically. Uh, we are working for the first time in the possibility of a pharmaceutical hub, for example, because all the pharmaceutical companies that we have in Panama are from from Europe and and United States, but one of my my big dreams is to see Indian companies in Panama working for all the Latin American region and the Caribbean from Panama. It's one of my dreams. I'm I'm working with uh, many many. Indian companies, pharmaceutical companies, trying to spread the new, hey, we have something in mind. There's something new in Panama. We are working on the pharmaceutical hub. We would like to see many yeah. Indian pharmaceutical companies here in Panama. And also, from, from any sector, we will be very happy to, to develop projects in, in, in Panama and also, we would like to serve all the other Latin American countries. We we every day learn from Brazil, from Mexico, from Peru, from Chile, from all the countries. All the countries around the world are important for us. Yes. And the, 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 the last thing that I, wa I want to say is that I am very, very happy for Mr. Prabhakar Saran. I am very, very happy for all India because I always try to read and being very informed about what's happening in India. And, I, and my opinion, my humble opinion is that India is all over the world. Uh, it's not only China that is in all over the world. India, India is doing something very big for the world. I read every day the newspapers. I, I every day see what's going on in india and i'm very proud of that thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much for your all sort of presentation we assure you that our chamber will do our best to promote the india panama relation and try the pharmaceutical and some other companies to make their hub in panama and uh, prabhakar sharan is there and with our joint effort we will ensure that whatever development has been made, what our ambassador has uh, announced here about the relationship between our chamber and your, uh, your ministry and Prabhakar Sharan as a goodwill ambassador, we will definitely promote our Indian companies and Indian business to Panama. Thank you very much. Now the terms come to Sobanji. Sobanji, uh, if you could finish within, within in 10 minutes time, sir.
brief and just because you are a correspondent so you know better how to put it and keeping in mind oh. that our 200 250 listeners attendees are here to b- b- listening your 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 uh, view points okay please go ahead. Oh, thank you very th- thank you very much mr sharma thank you to elac for inviting me to talk about uh, uh, trade between brazil and india uh, first let me start with apologizing for being very informally dressed because it's very late here the night and it's very cold it's 12 degrees so i'm sitting in my study and you know wearing uh, uh, winter clothes and try to keep myself warm but uh, my fellow panelists and mr ambassador already left but it's a privilege to be here uh, i'll keep myself to Restricted to some very basic facts about Brazil and Brazil-India trade, and I'll try to put the whole thing in the context of coronavirus, uh, what impact it is having, and what are the opportunities in the future after the post-corona world, what opportunities we can have between uh, between Latin American countries and especially between Brazil and India. So um, let me start talking a little bit about Brazil uh, in terms of size. Brazil is almost two and a half times bigger than India. The population is almost 210 million people, and the the GDP of Brazil is almost two trillion dollar. So we're talking about a country which is two and a half times bigger than uh, in size than India, but the population of just Uttar Pradesh. That is the population of of, of Brazil. It's the biggest country in Latin America. It is the biggest uh, economy in Latin America. and it is the only portuguese speaking country in the whole region uh so it is a very important country for india because india and brazil are members of many multilateral organizations whether it's brics ipsa basic g20 and g4 and um the relations between these two countries have grown tremendously in the past few years uh this is the picture of uh, of the country where i'm sitting uh let me talk about let me start talking first about the negative things uh, about the trade or the brazilian economic situation so if you look at the what has happened since the corona virus started in february and march the first case happened here in february end of february since then the brazilian market has crashed it hasn't collapsed completely but it has gone down drastically also the brazilian <laughs> currency uh if you compare with the uh, dollar its value has gone down before the corona virus started the, they were talking about brazilian economy growing at between 1.5 to 2% this year and next year and now the projection is that it may grow in go into negative territory of minus 4 to minus 6% so it's not very good situation to be uh for a country of brazil size or, the, or for the economy of brazil size you know when your the stock market mm-hmm. is falling your currency is, is falling uh and uh and your uh, gdp is likely to fall in the coming years but brazil is not the only country that's happening to it's happening all over the world you know the the us is in a uh, pretty bad shape uh chinese economy is in good shape india is also facing problems so that is the situation we are so this is the negative uh, scenario i'm talking about the second negative part of the whole situation is when i came here in 2012 the brazil india trade was almost 12 billion dollar and the two countries were talking about taking this trade to 15 billion dollar in next three years today it has come down to 7 billion dollar so instead of of increasing the trade has gone down uh i don't know exactly how it compares with other latin american countries but in case of brazil the trade has gone down <clears throat> and to just give you a clear picture uh in 2012 the trade between brazil and china was between 60 and 70 billion dollar and today it's 100 billion dollar so you you can just to make a comparison you know china brazil trade 100 billion dollar china india trade 7 to 9 billion dollar are not a very uh, negative but not very positive scenario as such but i have uh, all the negative things i could talk i will talk now let's talk about the positive things 
and where is the opportunity? What can be done uh, to make trade between these two countries uh, better? What are the opportunities for Indian exporters, Indian traders, Indian businessmen who want to come here? And what are the opportunities for Brazilian companies who want to go to India? What are the sectors? Uh, you know that this pandemic is creating a lot of problem around the world, but two sectors in which Indian companies are doing quite well. The one is a is pharmaceutical, and second is information technology. Uh, the Indian companies have a very very good presence here. <clears throat> All the top Indian companies, whether it's Dr. Reddy, is a Lupin, or you name it, they have offices here. Uh, they have huge operations here, and they are doing pretty well. You know because of the uh, there's a demand for medicines, uh, there's a demand for medical equipment. Uh, most of it's coming from China, but I think India is also sending a lot of stuff, especially hydroxychloroquine being sent in big quantities from India to, to Brazil. So that sector is doing well. The second sector that is doing well is information technology. Uh, we have all the big companies, Wipro, Enforces, TCS, Cognizant, you name it. They have the headquarters here. They have the Latin American headquarters here. And because of the demand, uh, increased demand in internet and internet communication, uh, banking, uh, everything is have moved to online, so the companies are also doing quite well. Now, these two sectors are also pretty well established uh, in Brazil. So, you know, for the chamber, like I like, I don't, uh, big companies uh, don't see much opportunity there uh, because they are big companies, pretty well established. Now, in the, in the post, pandemic world, whenever this crisis is over, where are the opportunities for Indian businesses and Brazilian businesses to work together? Because the only way you can do business in this country is with joint collaboration with a Brazilian company. I basically see five sectors. One is the agro business. Second is solar energy. Third is ethanol. Fourth is food. And last is defense. Uh, also, the Prime Minister has been here in um, last year to, to participate in the BRICS meeting. And uh, after that, uh, these are the sectors on which the Indian government is also focusing to increase trade between the two countries. Uh, Brazil has a very big agribusiness. It's one of the largest producers of chicken and, and meat. Of course, India doesn't consume uh, meat, but it has a very big producer of, of chicken and other uh, products. Also, the food production is, is pretty big here. And it has a small population so the as compared to India, so the consumption is very low. So in the future, because India has a growing population and a growing economy, there is going to be a lot of demand for food in India, whether it's vegetables or fruits, or uh, especially pulses, lentils, uh, grains, all of those things can be resourced pretty well from Brazil. So there's going to be a lot of uh, opportunities in that area. Also, as Mr. Ambassador talked about, the climate change. Uh, climate change is already a very big issue and it's going to become even bigger issue now because of this uh, pandemic, the crisis created by the pandemic. And many companies and many countries are going to move to uh, green resources for, uh, for energy. And Brazilians are, are very good in three sectors, wind energy, solar energy, and they are pioneers in ethanol. It's one of the largest producers of sugar and a byproduct of sugar is ethanol. And all the cars here, most of the cars here run on a uh, engine, which is called uh, running on, on two, it runs on, on, on gas, it also runs on ethanol. There's a huge opportunity. For of course, India is also a very big producer of, of, of sugar, but what India can learn from Brazil is the technology, uh, the kind of technology they have here, and especially the how the wastage from the sugar production is utilized uh, uh, after the it has been done. No? So I see a great opportunity for India in ethanol and importing sugar technology uh, from Brazil. Now, uh, there have been some questions about, uh, just as the last point, I'll finish it and I think I'll address more issues when people have questions. 
Uh, some people are asking if there's a chances of Brazilian companies moving from China to India. Uh, Brazil doesn't have a very strong manufacturing base like China. It's a basically a commodity economy. They sell things from here, whether it's a sugar, whether it's food grains, pulses, lentils, leather, anything, commodities. It's not a great manufacturing exporter. So we don't have a situation where you have Brazilian companies operating from China and they can shift base to India. But there definitely can be possibility of some Brazilian companies going to India in joint collaboration and setting up factories in India so that they can directly sell their products in India. So uh, I spoke very fast because I know I knew it was short of time, but I have to try to cover as much ground as I could. I'll try to answer questions if we have time. Otherwise, uh, the people who have some questions can send to the chamber and we can address them later. Again, thanks everyone for this opportunity and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, Soganji, thank you very much. You have given a very, very knowledgeable presentation and top up that you said if any Chinese companies think or decide for their manufacturing hub in India, you will try to assist them. Chamber is here to support. Chamber is here to look into. Send me the proposal and we give this proposal to the Ministry of Commerce who looks after, who is looking after the this type of interest over here and we will carry forward. This is interesting. As you are aware, India has declared a policy Atmanirbhar, Atmanirbhar Bharat, self-defense, self-defendant, self, self, I mean self-independent India. So India is going to be Atmanirbhar Bharat and this type of activity India is looking for. So definitely we will come back to you. Moderator, if you have any question from Mr. Sogan Saxena, please ask Maxon to question because he will be allowed to go. And Mr. Saxena, I assure you next time we will do one session completely between India and Brazil. And as per your convenient time, so that you should get opportunity from our ambassador side, you side, and of course, Mr. Prabhakar Sun will be everywhere because he looks after the Latin America. So next time, we assure you that you will make India Brazil. Any questions? Only two questions from Mr. Sogan Satsena, then he will go because maybe it is 3 o'clock in Brazil in the morning. Sure. So there's a question from Panak Bhaiya. Uh, sir, what are the opportunities for small exporters in Latin American region? We have many uh, small exporters like vegetable, eco-friendly products, merchant exports, and pharmaceuticals. So, Mr. Shoka. Well, uh, okay, sorry. sorry yeah, for you. Okay, sorry. well, please. Please. No, no, okay, sorry. It, it really depends on the sector, which sector you are uh, working in. Uh, as I said, the pharmaceutical sectors, they are already very big players here present here. But I think your small exporters uh, have a lot of uh, potential, and especially in spices. Uh, there's great demand for spices from India, handicraft, uh, textile, clothes, um, homemade products. Uh, there's a big demand. And you have to remember that Brazil is a very, very big market. It's a 200 million people market, and it's a very consumerist society. Uh, so there are a lot of opportunities. But I think the best way to move forward, anyone who has uh, it, it's important to make your query very specific and send to the chamber and you should be backed by a proper market research. So if you can send the name of the company to the chamber and the sector you're working in and what you're looking at, then we can follow it up with a proper market research and survey and give you a report. That's the right way to proceed, in my opinion. Thanks, Mr. Last, uh, the last question is, uh, there's a question from Vivanshu Srivastav. He's, uh, he's asking, what are the trade agreements uh, with uh, Latin American and specifically from uh, with Brazil and India? If you can share some light on that. Oh, how much time do you have? <laughs> Sir, only, uh, only, 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 three, only two minutes for you. Okay. So, you know, uh, you know, Brazil and India have been trying to promote trade uh, between these two countries for a very long time. And as I said before, the trade in sort of increasing has come down. I think in the past two years, there has been an effort to again increase the uh, uh, increase the trade between the two countries, and they have signed many treaties. And the areas which I mentioned, especially solar energy, ethanol, uh, agribusiness, uh, food and defense, uh, these are the areas in which the two countries are focusing, and some of the pacts have been signed, signed in recent 
yes uh, the idea is to give incentives to indian companies to come to brazil and brazilians company to go to india the only thing you have to remember when you come to brazil you mostly work with a local collaborator you need to have a joint collaboration to promote your business but it's a very big country very big market a lot of opportunities and i think when this crisis is over indian exporters should look more towards it but if you are more specific about the sector you're working in and what you want to sell here then we can help you in a more concrete manner thank you so when you thank you very much it's a great opportunity to listen from you uh as you have requested that uh, after your presentation we used to go because too late so if you wish to stay you are most welcome otherwise it is your call if you want to go go and take rest next time we will uh, uh, we will organize india brazil relation itself no i think i'll stay for uh, uh, ms chitwan jain's presentation oh, then i'll very, go very good so chitwan so finally this is your call just brief me about chitwan that she is a young professional highly qualified uh, studied in the uh, business in uh, uh, i think from uk and she has worked with the ministry of commerce investment department and then four years before she uh, moved on to mexico she is married with the uh, joint secretary level officers in india who is working in the ministry of finance in mexico government this is the this is thing res chitun you will uh, you give something about detail about yourself and the business relation between india and mexico what you are you can do chitwan is your deputy director representing chamber in mexico chitwan hi everybody as uh, sharma sir just mentioned I have studied my masters in international economics and financial economics from the UK and uh, after that I went back to India and I have like I worked in the Ministry of Commerce and in uh, Commerce and Trade for about 1 one, one and a half years during that time I worked on a research project which was uh, like we were trying to see if there is a good prospective trade agreement that could be signed between the two countries India and Mexico so uh, when the study was finished we realized that more than 80% of in, uh, of mexican trade was being undertaken with us and a huge chunk after this was being uh, undertaken with canada because of the nafta agreement that the three countries share so at that moment it was like around in 2014 approximately and uh, that was the reason that the project did not move ahead at that time but since the government of mexico changed around in 2017 18 a lot of things have changed the mexican government is now trying to diversify its options in uh, in terms of trade they don't only want to be stuck with the united states and canada they're trying to open up the horizons so i am first going to start with uh, giving a, brief, a bit of brief about mexico So uh, after Brazil, as uh, Shobhan sir was mentioning, Mexico is the second largest country in Latin America. Geographically, Mexico has a lot of uh, a lot of advantages because Mexico firstly shares its border with United States and then with Canada, which is uh, very beneficial because of the NAFTA agreement. And below South, it is it uh, has a lot of proximity with the South and the Central American countries. apart from this uh, the mexican society is also very consumer based society and mexico as a country itself has a lot of trade alliances with pretty much all the central and south american countries like it has trade alliances with peru colombia panama costa rica guatemala all these countries are they have good trade relations with mexico so <clears throat> because of uh, because there is no trade agreement as such a free trade one between india and mexico uh, from my point of view it would be really beneficial if if we are able to give like a proposal to the government so probably they can redo the analysis that i was talking about between the prospective agreement between the two countries because now there are way more uh, there's there's a lot of more interest from the mexican side to open mm -hmm. up the uh, opportunities of trade with india then apart from this mexico 
currently is importing a lot of uh, motorcycles, cars, automobile parts, a lot of accessories from uh, cars in this industry, automobile industry to, uh, to Mexico. So in the future, we, I see uh, this as a very big opportunity that big, big cars, uh, car brands, like for example, uh, this one Volkswagen, the Volkswagen car Vento is being imported into Mexico in huge quantities. And apart from that, there is like Ford cars also that are coming to India. So if in the future, this kind of big, uh, big brand, car uh, brands from India, they can set up a, set up a manufacturing facility in uh, Mexico, they would get access to a lot of more markets and not only Mexican market because of all the trade alliances that Mexico shares with all these countries. And since we already have good, um, good and big people sitting like Prabhagar and uh, uh, this Hardeep sir and Shobhan sir and all you guys, there can be a huge market that can be like established having the manufacturing facility in Mexico. Because Mexico has a lot of uh, SEZ, special economic zones also, which this current government apparently had cancelled all of them. But they are being, uh, the state governments of all the states are taking into consideration all the points and they are willing to go ahead with the projects. The government itself, the president and his team are not going to support them because they are not very willing to do so, but the state governments, they want to proceed with it. So taking advantage of those kind of SEZs, a manufacturing facility or big uh, car showrooms, for example, or automobile industries can be set up here. And then those, all those accessories, those cars taking, taking into, uh, taking all the advantages into consideration of the trade alliances can be or could be exported to other oh. South and Central American countries. Then after this, I would like to talk about, um, I would like to focus more on the pharmaceutical sector. Right now in, uh, in Mexico, we have, in terms of the Indian companies, right now we have uh, Dr. Reddy's laboratories and we also have a very big Indian company known as Sun Pharma, Sun Pharmaceuticals. So both these are focusing on like diabetes, neurology, cardiology, and other uh, fields of medical science. In Mexico, the, uh, the diseases that are there that are more prominent and because of which a lot of people die every year, every year, sorry, is diabetes. Luego, uh, then uh, after diabetes, we have uh, this heart related uh, diseases and there is obesity. So in, in, uh, we can take advantage of this also. So according, in my opinion, apart from Dr. Eddie's and Sun Pharma in India, we have a very big uh, expert research team of medical science. So for example, companies like CIPLA or uh, other big pharmaceutical sector companies from India could set up a manufacturing facility here, obviously depending on the, one of the SEZ zones to take advantage of tax benefits and custom duties and all those things. And again, they, there are two ways to take advantage of that. If we have a manufacturing facility here in Mexico, the one of the ways could be that they first produce and manufacture the basic components of medicines and other uh, injections, medicines and all other things that are used in uh, medicine, medicinal science. Those basic components can be uh, can be sold to other manufacturers in Mexico that are also producing the final product used in medical science. Apart from that, the basic component, the same basic component could be exported to the neighboring countries and other countries with which Mexico has trade alliances. So in this, I'm talking about Panama, Colombia, Costa Rica, Guatemala, uh, El Salvador, Honduras, all these. Apart from that, Japan, because Mexico has a trade agreement with Japan, with, uh, with Israel also. So all these markets can also be explored if there is an, there's a manufacturing facility here. Apart from this, when they produce the final medicine in the manufacturing facility here, that final medicine could be used to first to be sold to the, to the public, general public in Mexico. Apart from that, they could be sold to hospitals and clinics 
also they could be exported to all other countries that i just mentioned so these could be like two ways in which a when you're settling setting up a manufacturing facility in mexico in pharmaceutical uh, industry could be very beneficial and uh, apart from this um, from india we have a lot a lot of benefits also because india right now holds the largest number of us foods and drug administration licenses so those licenses and the expertise and all the experience that india has in the medical field is going to be a huge benefit for uh, for this developing this business between the two countries <clears throat> so i have some uh, a few figures here in 2017 most of the basic component of all the medicines was being imported into mexico it was not manufactured here itself so a lot of this basic component was being imported from china and as everybody knows because of the current situation of of covid-19 a lot of countries are trying to not to work with china to the extent that they were doing before so right now for example i have heard from a lot of people these days that they are trying to get for example the the fabric that is used for face masks and uh, surgical gowns and the pp kits all those things they are trying to get from india into mexico so this is one point and then apart from that the component of all the medicines as i was telling you those things all of them could be manufactured here itself in mexico which will obviously reduce cost because the facility will be here in place of importing it directly from india because importing medicinal things you need a lot of permission sanitary requirements and a lot of more complicated things than one uh, manufacturing unit here so um and yeah so, so that would be that would be my my point of view about the pharmaceutical sector and a bit about the automobile that i was talking uh thank you chitwan thank you very much and moderator you may take two questions from from chitwan mexico side we get already 12 o'clock in india i think that we have half an hour time and second session is available here our our rajasthan chapter mr vikram is to be here to speak and take two questions and then 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 uh, then we will move to the second panel please go ahead uh fine so i have couple of questions to uh, for prabhaka sharan ji because there are a lot of people who are from the garment sector were asking uh some of his uh, point of view about how they how do they I can think, start I, I, listen listen i will say ki take few questions to chitwan and free air if you wish to stay let us stay and uh, then we will move to prabhaka sharan is here prabhaka sharan's time i have taken for for sufficient time today because he is very good he he is responsible for letting me that you like to be here so take question first on chitwan so just give me a couple of minutes i don't see any specific questions for uh, chitwan as of now okay so please uh, see uh since since mr vikram rastogi is here vikram rastogi is one of the speaker from the india side second panel but since our latin america panelists are here so who so uh, mr mr rastogi why not to ask some question from these panels and then you will speak later stage <clears throat> uh thank you mr sharma can i make my presentation also and ask some questions yeah please go ahead go ahead okay okay uh good afternoon everybody it is a pleasure to be here i would like to thank mr ark sharma as president as well as i would like to thank uh, mr bhuler chitran shobhan prabhakan sharan umesh ji and my colleague from ilacc you are all welcome and i would also like to welcome the attendees i believe there used to be a there was a chance of having about 200 attendees from different sectors i am really happy to listen to mr prabhakar mr shobhan and ms chitwan because whatever points i noted down and whatever i spoke to like talking about the uh, garment talking about pharmaceutical talking about stones so when i was talking to mr sharma i just found out 
the area where there could be a strong support from India. And that is what I'm going to present now. Uh, before I start, I would just tell a few things about myself. Uh, I had a career with about five, six faculties, like Mr. Prabhakan said. I was teaching engineering, then I was working for a parastructural corporation in Rajasthan. Then I was working as a consultant with the Commonwealth Secretary of London, unit of Vienna. Uh, fortunately, I had the opportunity of working with Mr. Naresh Chandra, IAS, who was former cabinet secretary personally in Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and Zambia. And I did many projects. I have been to Brazil three, four times, and I have understood whatever is possible. Unfortunately, I could not travel to South America or America, Latin America, because it was not a Commonwealth country. I have been to about 43 countries so far. I have done so many consultancies in different fields as well as more than about 100, 125 uh, foreign visits. Now, coming to post-COVID area, I would just like to tell two things. Well, one of it, uh, Ms. Chitwan has already said, after COVID-19, India has developed immunity system, which is basically homopathic A30 and camphor 1M. Now, these are the two drugs which have been recommended by government also to be taken. And there's a good demand. There could be a good demand in Latin American countries to take this because COVID is not going to finish now. It may continue till December, maybe next year. Simultaneously, uh, Ayurvedic department, Ayush has recommended three things, Chavan Prash, uh, Ashwagandha, and Ayush Kada. Now, these are the three things which can be given. So there could be some entrepreneur in Latin American countries, maybe Brazil, maybe Panama, maybe Chile, uh, who would be interested in importing these to give it to the people. That is going to be a humanitarian part. In addition to this, recently, Government of India has allowed in export of PPE and a mask and 95 and 23 layer mask also, a sanitizer also. So depending upon that, because there is going to be surplus capacity of these items in India, there is a very good chance and a quick chance, and I would appreciate if Mr. Sharma could take it up, that these items could be supplied to lead countries at a very, very reasonable price because there is a surplus capacity now and this is going to happen. Now, I would like to speak about some product. I'm really happy and uh, I feel very uh, honored that Chitwan, Shoban and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Prabhakaran has already spoken about it. Uh, uh, one more stones. I was going to argue that Rajasthan, Gujarat, Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, because that is my passion. I have been in stone for about 40 years. I have been on in Italy. I have been in Bombay and Rajasthan. I have done many, many projects. So one was Marvel and Granite because I have seen Brazil. So I'm coming back to Chip one that there could be a possibility. I've been talking about the possibility of collaborating Chinese, uh, sorry, Brazilian companies selling granite into India, Brazilian companies importing marble, sandstone from India and there could be either a collaborative manufacturing or collaborative marketing. I've been asking, I've seen hundreds of containers flying in Brazilian companies, unsold. And because of this turmoil, there is no market. If you see the world map, USA, there's a problem. Then there's a problem in UK, there's a problem in Germany, there's a problem in uh, Canada. Only thing is Far East, and then the only thing remains is Latin American countries and Africa. My personal feeling is this is the right time when LAC countries could be tapped. So this was about this. Then engineered stone has recently come up, quad surfaces. You got a large capacity, yeah. everything is going to US, and therefore what would happen is that this could be diverted as someone said, that it could go to the Panama and then it could reach there. And I'm sure that the Indian companies would be able to give it a very good price because they are exporting a large quantity of generic marble, sandstone, and quartzite. Or water services to US. <coughs> pharmaceutical. This was my second biggest bet. Pharmaceutical. I spoke to some people in Gujarat. I spoke to some people in uh, Indian Drug Manufacturing Association, and they did mention Cipla. Then uh, they mentioned about Dr. Reddy, and they said a couple of companies are already set up. But I think there is a very good chance because India, I think, ranks fourth or fifth in the world as far as manufacturing of pharmaceutical items is concerned, and therefore. I'm definite that more collaborative efforts can be made. Only problem which I was facing, and that is question to Ms. Chitwan also, or Mr. Buller also, that people said that they require that the rules and regulations are very stringent, like FDA, uh -huh. like CE. Rastogi ji, Rastogi ji, 
Rastogi ji, yeah. I will have to hang on you because time is getting short. Okay. And uh, okay. you have very valid question. We have already 10 minutes. So okay. I think that we will have to close down this 10 minutes. Uh, you have put forth your proposal. Let one one question in one one minute to be replied by Mr. Prabhakar and Chitwan and uh, that's all. Uh, could you give me just two minutes to finish? Just two yeah, minutes. Please. Please, 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 please. Yeah, garment was one other question which somebody has read, and then I was talking about it. Indian companies or Japanese companies were doing very well in Brazil, 16, 15, 16, 17, but there is a problem. So they would ask for the question. Project export is something else which we can enter and we can set up the project. Then skilling and upskilling can be done. That's not a very big issue. And then we can come back. Uh, on the consultancy part because we've got a very strong team where we can support. I'm not talking about Accenture. I'm not talking about multinational, but at the lower level it can be done. It is very good team. And what we want from black countries, from new people, one is established renowned importers, financially sound, reputed first class bank, and assured payment and good distribution channel. That is what is needed from your side. And what we can offer is established renowned exporters, quality product, attractive prices, due certification, uh, timely dispatches, and free dispatch inspection. And finally, lack is a thrust area of the government of India. This is the right time for Mr. Sharma as well as our global investor and uh, His Excellency to enter into it, use the line of credit, special marketing scheme that we may have, fair participation and delegations with it. My personal feeling is have been to so many countries and initially, I thought that Africa was a sleeping giant. But now I can definitely say that Latin America is one region which can easily be tapped. Only problem is about the language, but I'm sure that we can. Prabhakar ji, Prabhakar ji, please reply in two minutes because we had the other panel, but we cannot speak now. Reply only two minutes only. And Prastogi ji is very senior, most senior professional. Inka har question lekar ke, ham inko properly aapko lekhen, unko jawab lekhenge, aur aap unko jawab denge. Do minute khatam kare, mujhe kuch yahan pe karna hai. Prastogi sir, thank you very much for your, you know. For your questions or not, let's go to the point. Uh, exactly, you want to know about uh, garment, garment industry, and uh, pharmaceuticals. That's, that's your that that's your main interest. Garment, uh, uh, garments, and pharmaceuticals. That's your main interest. Okay. Prastogi. Yeah. Uh, your main interest is garment and and uh, pharmaceutical. That is what you want to know. So, sir, no, sir. Three things for the time being, because we got audience. One is stones, yeah. marble, granite, engineered stones. Second one is pharmaceutical, where we are very strong, and there are people waiting for it. And the third thing is garment. Chemistry Perfect. one and okay. other things is also, yeah, these are the three main things because there are so many people involved in this yeah. sector, and we can yeah. do wonders, sir. Yeah, let me explain you, sir. Uh, basically, let's talk firstly about uh, garment. I was personally doing that business. And uh, uh, garment. Only two minutes, please. I am interfering only two minutes. I mean, these things can be quoted to India. I know your country, and uh, please finish only two minutes. Okay, sir. Perfect. So basically, garment business here in in Latin America. Uh, I mean, uh, clothing is one of the biggest needs. Uh, though everything comes from America, but India is a is a very strategic partner for garment. Everyone knows that the cotton from India is is the most valuable item in whole. Uh, Latin America. Uh, it, it, it's not competed by China, America, anywhere. It's, it's just India. India has got that cotton. Every, everyone knows that. You don't need to educate. Uh, it's, a, it's a trade business of more than uh, 200 million import and export. If you see here, here also Peru and all, we, we import from Peru, uh, we import from India. So, you know, it's a, a more or less 200 million. You can calculate that's the industry. Uh, right now for, for, for from India and just talking about India. Then we go for pharma. Uh, from last five years, everyone, like Chitwan told, everyone is getting educated by Indian medicine. Uh, uh, they are getting dependent. Let's talk about Costa Rica. Costa Rica gets 65% of their supply, not from China, but from India. And I'm talking about the government of Costa Rica. Uh, it's a department, Kaha Seguro Social. They distribute medicine to all the hospital and people. So mostly people and hospitals, uh, they, it's a very open system. 
uh, you can just come register your company quote for the government and easily you can get an order same thing happens in panama same thing happens in peru same thing happens in in uh, nicaragua and guatemala so well, thank, you, thank, you, thank you very much matter is well noted and we will be in touch Mr. Stogie will give the detail. You reply. Ah, uh, this this our first session for Latin America is over. Now we have the consultant from India side, Mr. Umesh Omni Krishnan, who has organized the program very well. Ah, uh, Prabhakar ji, you know him. Umesh ji, you will get only three four minutes to present yourself. What do you want to say? Please. Karyan. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, to join the session. Uh, this is first of our uh, multiple programs that we wanted to explore and how to connect uh, various countries to India. Uh, like everybody has focused, uh, this is the opportunity for all our Indian uh, businessmen and exporters to explore what can we take up uh, right away. And also to showcase the network that the chamber has right now across the Latin American side as well as in the Indian side. Uh, I would like to explain just a couple of important points that uh, our attendees need to know about. Uh, there are about 44 countries in Latin American Caribbean region, out of which only six countries uh, contribute to 80% of Indian trade. Uh, now that's where the opportunity lies. And like you have heard about. Uh, the numbers from our speakers, uh, we have still not uh, explored the complete potential of Latin America. Uh, looking at the scenario right now, the chamber is taking this opportunity to utilize this uh, current business scenario to promote and project the Latin American trade opportunity to all the industrialists across India. Uh, we are connecting and also trying to figure out how can we provide absolutely the right market to members and our uh, Indian uh, businessmen. Uh, we would like to suggest that everybody, uh, all the queries that you have, you made it to the chamber. Uh, having said that, there are a couple of very important opportunities that we have uh, the next year as a chamber. Uh, we have been authorized to be one of the uh, uh, leading chamber to represent India in the trade pairs uh, in Latin America, one is Expo Farmer itself. We have also been talking to the Ministry of MSME for uh, subsequent uh, subsequent subsidies for participation in trade fairs, etc. by the Indian uh, industries. Uh, we have received in principle approvals on the same. Now, to take such advantage of subsidies and reimbursement and also to develop the market across Latin America, we would request everybody to be a part of the chamber initially to take advantage because all this uh, uh, documentation will go through the chamber to the ministry as well to ensure that uh, we have the subsidies coming through. As you know, the market development assistance that is MA, MDA scheme and MAI scheme are already existing with the under the Ministry of MSME. Apart from that, uh, the various documentation requirement that is there for Latin America, the chamber is well equipped to support you uh, for any documentation that is required uh, to initiate exports and also for delivery processes, customs, duty, etc. One of the major areas that the chamber is um, required will be to do the due diligence of the customers at the Latin American side. So uh, before you initiate your business, it is very important to know that you have a genuine customer on the other side. And that is where we as a chamber will play as a very important role to ensure that your trade and business payments, etc. are secure. Uh, to ensure that uh, there are no hiccups across the trade. Uh, we want to ensure that there are better trade and opportunities that are taken up will go uh, through the chambers as an initiative. And we would request everybody to uh, be a part of the chamber. We will be shortly reaching out to each one of you uh, to explain the benefits of being a part of the chamber. Uh, we have been asked by the Ministry of External Affairs and MSME to take various initiatives to towards LAC region. 
and that's where we want to ensure that even the international speakers who are there please do connect the chamber to all the potential partners that we need to expand the trade opportunities to india so with this i think uh, the whole focus that i wanted to bring uh, to the closure of this program is that uh, please get associated with us formally so that we can start making the presentations to various uh, government organizations and various locations where we can be represented as a group to take more benefits out countries on both sides uh, uh, so that's you, what thank, i would like to thank you very much vinod tiwari uh, you are you are on the you are on the line i am shown vinod ji vinod ji hello uh vinod ji the time is very short give your give your sub views followed by the vote of thanks to to all of them vinod ji your vice president and the founder one of the founder and vice president please give your little 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 submission as well as vote of thanks thank you aapki awaaz nahi aa rahi hai आवाज नहीं आ रही है हेलो 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 या गुड गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन आई एम विनोद तिवारी एंड द वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द चैंबर एंड आई एज अर्लियर द मिस्टर पुन्नी मेंशन एवरीथिंग इन द क्लोजर आई हैव टॉक्ड टू अबाउट द लॉजिस्टिक एंड द डॉक्यूमेंटेशन पार्ट बट ड्यू टू द शॉर्टेज ऑफ द टाइम एंड आई थिंक मिस्टर पुन्नी कवर एवरीथिंग and i may request all the attendees if you have any specific question on the logistic and the documentation part or or you need any kind of help with the chamber so please do write us and we will get in touch with you and i thanks to my all the eminent speakers from the uh, from maxco from uh, brazil and from our uh, panama uh, mr prabhakar sir and uh, our excellency mr upendra rawat thank you so much everybody for joining this uh, webinar and thanks uh, for your support and uh, we do believe that in future we will continuously organize this kind of webinar for your uh, uh, and look forward to support in future also so thank you very much thanks a lot everyone goodbye and god bless you thank you so much next so, next announce announce next one next one should be between <laughs> yeah we are we are uh, gentlemen we are trying we are trying to uh, trying to organize another webinar let's say around the 5 to 10 june uh, so date is not fixed we will convey our message and the topic would be also share within a short of time and uh, this time we will try to try to manage uh, good enough of time so that everyone has can uh, can share their views uh, so this time uh, time is uh, short enough time we cannot cover so many areas so next time definitely we will have more time and uh, focus on other country business uh, opportunity so thanks you so much thank you so much thank you, uh, thank you very much so finally in the one minute from core of my heart i i place my sincere thanks from all the panelists of the latin america uh honorable 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 ambassador rawat sir Mr. Mr. Haradeep Singh Bullar, Mr. Prabhakar, Mr. Prabhakar Sharan, Mr. Sogan Satyana, Chitwani, you have given a lot of time. It is must be must be three four o'clock in the Mexico. I don't know time. How much time there? Four o'clock, sir. Four o'clock morning. Very good. 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 Very all of the attendees i am thankful to attendee uh, moderator you are here by advice to play to take the question of all the person who has attended the organization be it from the special economic zone investment company formation documentation or whatever it is and pass on to us and we will we will look into and pass on to the concern concerned desk you know the various uh, latin american offices and we will get their reply and come back to you who may say any four five minutes there or it is gone anyway 
एनीवे सो सो आई थिंक दैट वी आर कमिंग टू द क्लोज ऑफ प्रभाकर जी थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर स्पेयरिंग योर होल ऑफ द नाइट हियर बट बट यू आर सपोज्ड टू बिकॉज़ यू आर यू हैव अ लॉट ऑफ रिस्पांसिबिलिटी ऑन योर हेड्स नाउ यू आर द एक्सेलेंसी गुडविल ऑफ इंडिया बिटवीन इंडिया एंड पनाम uh yes and since our since our uh ambassador since our ambassador has briefed in this discussion that latin that indo latin american chamber has signed the mou bid bid government of panama ministry of ministry of commerce ministry of commerce government of panama has signed mou with your indo latin american chamber of commerce three days ago Three days ago, so this is the great, great news for us, for us, for chamber. And you understand what is the meaning of signing government MOU with the chamber? Rest formality. Once the protocol is over, you will be all advised. So this is one of the information which I am, I am, I am uh, informing all of you. And final official information will come from when the protocol is completed from that side. Since the minister has announced, so I am I am vetoing it. So so this is the whole of the thing. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thanks all for joining us. Thank you very much with this note. This session comes to a close. I look for the another session. Thank you very much. Mary photo नहीं आ पाई ये ये दुर्भाग्य है. So thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. नमस्कार सबको आप लोग नमस्कार थैंक यू लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन फॉर बीइंग थैंक यू वेरी मच सो दिस वेबिनार इज एंड्स नाउ थैंक यू थैंक यू संदीप फॉर गुड एफर्ट थैंक यू मिस्टर संदीप आई एम संदीपन संदीपन थैंक यू यू हैव ऑर्गेनाइज्ड दिस वेबिनार very well very nicely and you deserve a lot of thanks from our from our chamber and uh, really we place our sincere thanks for organizing very well thank you uh, sharma ji thank you bye 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 everybody chitwan uh, chitwan thank you thank you sir okay project